and I'll say, good evening, Las Vegas. Now I'll go ahead and save that, close it down, save the changes, yes. And I'll close my documents. Let's go into properties here and see if I uh, have a bitmap. Hmm. Maybe getting into a little trouble with this new early builder in 5. Well, actually, let's leave the desktop in. Ah, there we go. Stampy. Yeah. We're working on that. <laughs> So what I've done here is to quickly customize the desktop and I just changed it from that other background to this one and I added a document to my documents. I'm done for the day, I've done a lot of work here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut the machine down. And when I go home and come in the next day, I realize that my IT uh, administrator has decided that it's time for me to get a brand new machine. Which I agree, yeah. Pretty exciting for me. So I'm going to reach down here and pick up our brand new machine. This is an FGC. <laughs> Well, actually, it doesn't look like I have a brand new machine. It looks like my own machine crashed. So it's time for me to up it to uh, get a brand new one here. So let's go ahead and unplug the power. And we're just going to swap these machines out. I'm going to replace the net card. So this machine has a completely empty hard disk. There's nothing that's been installed in here. It's just a, a totally new machine. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're taking a, a brand new machine, and we're going to just switch all the cables. And your screens are going to be not dead. But once I get these plugged back in, be a tricky proposition. There we go. I'll plug the power back in. And now let's power this up. Right there. And in a few moments, you should see that this machine starts to boot up. It's a net PC, so it's a completely sealed case design. There's no floppiness, there's no CD uh, at all. It's got a built in net card that supports remote boot, which means that now when I turn this on, it can go up over the network. And uh, the, the administrator has changed that this computer's unique ID, the old one, and remapped it to this new one in the Active Directory for NT5. So this machine's going to broadcast that unique ID. The Active Directory's going to be able to see what operating system I want to run. So you can see on the screens, hopefully, that uh, it's starting to load NT5.0 workstation on my new machine. So we're going to let this sort of cook for a little while. We can do the Julia Child and come down. Wait, OK, that's going to cook. And we're going to head over to this side. Give that some time to download the OS. And now we're going to take a look at how HT5 and Telegram makes it very easy for administrators to uh, administer applications. Now, Bill, let me know if this gets the most technical for you. And I'm going to try to get this down a What we're looking at right here on our screens is uh, my NT client. I'm running NT5.0 uh, workstation on this machine. And again, we have a separate machine that's running NT5 server. What I'm going to go ahead and do is switch over to the server. There it is. You can see it on all your screens. And here we're looking at the Microsoft Management Console, which is a common user interface uh, to manage all your different administrative tasks in NT5. So you'll see in my uh, app domain of my company, I've been able to sort of structure our app domain in the same hierarchy that our organization exists in. So we've got a marketing folder right here, and below that we have Windows marketing, we've got Office marketing, et cetera, et cetera. This means that the administrator can really control the things that they roll out to just the set of people that they want. Everyone in marketing or people just in a particular area. So let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to come down to our marketing policy. We use our policies to roll things out for our users. I'm going to right-click and choose Add. And here I can go ahead and add this red application. Now what this is going to do is go ahead and uh, go through building this distribution server up on the server so we can do a server-side install. So it's taking this application, be it uh, Excel, or in this case, it's a very simple little one called Red, and it's putting it out in this policy. The default here is to just publish this to users so that it shows up in their control panel as something that they can add if they wish. But if I am a little more aggressive as an IT manager, I can come in here and change this employment option to assign. I'll go ahead and hit OK. So publish means it's easily available. They see it on the list of programs. But assign, it just gets put on their machine automatically. Exactly. So let's see that. I'm going to switch back over to the client. There it is. And now if I go to the start menu and choose programs, you'll see that red is not in here. That's because we need to log off. Sort of shows that this wasn't uh, meant ahead of time. I'm going to log off. In a moment here, I'll control of leak. And I'll log back on. Now when I log back on, this machine goes out to the empty server active directory and pulls down all the information that we need uh, to build that start menu. And when we're done logging on, and I go to start, programs, sure enough, there's red. 
Now, what's interesting about this, of course, is that when I choose it for the first time, it's going to see that there are no red reds installed on this machine. So it's going to go up to the distribution server, run that install, and run red for us. The admin set this up so that I don't have to answer a single question. I don't answer where I want this application to live. I don't answer anything. It just figures out the bits aren't there, puts them there, and runs the app for me. It's great up. Okay? It's pretty high, high power. Too. Now, the thing that's kind of hard to show is that I'm installing this on this machine, but this will follow me no matter where I go in the organization. So if you're out here with speech and I kind of sneak into your office and I log onto your machine as me, again, I'm going to see red right there. And as soon as I choose it the first time, red gets installed. So it really follows me around. Now, what about the case where we want to upgrade that, that product? Well, I'm glad you asked, Bill. Let's switch back over to the server. Now we've got a new version of this application. It's not enough to just manage the rolling out of it. We want to manage the moving and upgrading every piece of it. I'm going to right click and choose upgrade. And that's now points to the version 2 folder. Choose red once again. And again, we'll go through the process of building the distribution server and creating that uh, cycle on server to install this application from. Now I, as a user on my machine, don't really have to do anything. The administrator has upgraded, us, upgraded this for me. And if I switch back over to the client, Let's close red right down. When I go ahead and choose programs red, and close that down, it runs the old red because it hasn't uh, gone into the server to see that there's a new one yet. Let's log off. And when I log back on, start it again. Go out to Active Directory, figure out there are new bits there for us. Start programs. I'll choose red again. It sees that there are new bits up there. It just does the install for me seamlessly, and it's going to run this high-powered new version of red. I think you'll be impressed with the uh, enhancements. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sentence, exactly. Now, one of the things that we find users do often without meaning to is to uh, delete files on their machine because we're trying to let's say, free up some disk space. So I'm going to open up program files, and this colorful folder contains those red files. I'm going to choose to right-click on that, and choose delete. I'm going to send that all to the cycle bin. Ah. Okay, point, it's running. Let's close it down and start to delete those files on the error on being executed. Okay, now that's gone. And if I come back down here and start it, I'll choose red again, and rather than giving us a series of dialogues saying we're missing some DLLs or whatever, it realizes and it sort of heals itself, goes out, gets the new bits, and uh, runs around again. Looks good. So you don't have to think about 